Okay, this is section 1.5. We're going to talk about sampling first. Now you'll notice that my notes, if you take a look, don't start with sampling, but that's where we're going to start our discussion. So sampling, um, first of all, we remember it should be random and it should be representative of the population, and that's going to be our goal in discussing these. So first of all, I'd just like to mention four elements of good design. Now design can be for observational or it can be for experimental design, but it's the same no matter what. So first of all, before you design um, a tool to get your information or an experiment to get your information, you want to define a question. And then the population comes from the question. They're kind of simultaneous, but when you define your question, then that's going to tell you a little bit more even so about the population that you wish to find that question, um, the information for the question. And then you need to make a plan for how you're going to collect that data. If you're doing an observational study, like a survey, that's going to include how are you going to gather the information, the tool that you're going to use to gather that information. You're going to need to be aware of the problems that you can encounter as you go through this. So if you're designing a survey, you need to be aware of some of those um, problems with the surveys that we talked about before, such as the Rosenthal effect. Um, then also you want to make sure that when you talk about your analysis and give your conclusions that you point out where errors come from. So with that said, let's talk about sampling a little bit more detail here. So oops, the first thing that we want to um, that we want to talk about is that we want to do um, talk about what a random sample is. So a random sample is a sampling created that is created in such a way that all subpopulations in the population are existed uh, are going to exist in the sample in the same proportion that they originally exist in the population. Um, Another way of putting this is that every member of the population has an equally likely chance of being represented. Now, this is really not practical in most purpose, but what we want to do is we want to come as close to that ideal as possible. So here are some examples of how we could collect a random sample. So let's say that we are going to use our class um, of size 40 as a uh, population. So I want to choose five members from our class of 40 in order to decide um, some piece of information. Let's say um, the average age of the class. Okay. So I'm going to choose five people to get that information. So what I'll do is I'll number every single person's name and put that number in a hat. And then I'll shake it up and I'll draw that person's number, or draw five numbers out of the hat. And when I draw those five numbers out, then I ref reference them back to whose name they are, and then I'm going to ask the, those people on my list what their ages are. That is a random sample. Everyone in the class had an equally likely chance of being chosen. Another way of doing the same thing is to use a random number generator to generate the numbers um, that I should choose. And we'll talk about those random number generators briefly as well. Now another way to get a random sample would be to choose the males and the females as different subpopulations. And I'm just going to say, because I haven't looked, that I'm going to put in the 20 males numbers and 20 females numbers, you know, males, females. So I would number the males 1 through 20 and number the females 1 through 20. And this time I'm going to choose 5 males and I'm going to choose 5 females. And from the... Um, from those I do it randomly just like I did before. This again is a random sample because every male has an equally likely chance of being chosen, every female has an equally likely chance of being uh, chosen, there's equal representation of males and females. Now the next thing that we talk about is what we call a simple random sample and it is the word simple here that makes it different from just a random sample. Now this is the perfect world scenario. And a simple random sample is different from a random sample in the fact that 
every single sample of size n, so our case size 5, has an equally likely chance of being chosen. So our first example where I numbered all of the, uh, all of the class from 1 to 40, dropped them in a hat, chose 5 people out, that also constitutes a simple random sample because every single grouping of five could actually be chosen in that manner. Now, the other example, the one where I mail, did males and then females, that is not a simple random sample. And the reason why is because one of the samples that exists out there in our class would be all five being males or all five being females. And I couldn't get a sample of size 5 where all are males and all are females based upon choosing some from the males and some from the females. And so that would be why it would be a little bit different. Now, moving on, the next thing that we want to talk about is when it would be neither, right? So you've seen what a random sample is, got it. Simple random sample, okay, maybe I see that a little bit, how it's different, right? But what would be a neither? Well, a neither would be if I alphabetically ordered everyone in the class, like my roll sheet, right? And then to get the sample of five, I picked every eighth person. Well, if I did it that way, I'm not going to have everybody equally likely to be chosen because is the second, third, fourth, or fifth person um, sixth or sixth or seventh person ever going to be able to be chosen on that list? Nope. <laughs> so everybody's not equally likely to be chosen and that's what makes it not a random sample. And if it's not a random sample then it has no chance of being a simple random sample either. So that's what you want to take a look at. Now the next thing we're going to look at are the different types of sampling. And the types of sampling are going to be um, trying to help us get as close as we can possibly get to a random sample. Now, a random sample is the end all. That's what we'd love to have, a truly simple random sample. And if we can't have a simple random sample, a random sample, but those are not always possible either. So the types of sampling, let's just run through them really quickly. We have random sampling. We know what that is. We have systematic sampling. We've actually seen that. Stratified sampling. We've actually seen that as well. Cluster sampling, we haven't seen that one yet. Convenience sample, we've talked about this. And then a multi-stage sampling. This multi-stage sampling, I don't include it as in the types of sampling because it actually is including multiple types of these. So this is not actually a type in and of itself. It encompasses these others. So these five are the types of sampling. So our random samples, we know what that means. Systematic, that's where we do the alphabetized list and then choose every eighth person. That's a, a systematic way of choosing. So you choose and you make a system and you choose. A stratified sample, we break up into classifications like the male and female, and then we randomly sample from those classifications. Now a cluster and a stratified sample are many times confused with one another. The cluster sampling um, breaks things into groups as well, but instead of randomly choosing from each group, it randomly chooses an entire grouping. So that's where the stratified and the cluster differ. And then the last, a convenient sample. Well, <clears throat> it's exactly what it says it is. It's convenient. I do a lot of convenient sampling to get information um, because it's convenient, right? I, I sample information from my classes. Well, that I, that's who I see. So that's what makes it a convenient sample. Um, the voluntary response samples that we heard about earlier, that's a convenient sample too because it's convenient to those. Now your book has a really nice diagram, let me see if I can get it here, that I wanted you to see with these different types of sampling. So the random sampling and the simple random sampling, it's up here, and it shows you this is a random number generator on a computer. It's like drawing numbers from a hat. And like I said, hopefully we'll talk about that in class. Um, then this one is a systematic, right? Here's the line of people and we're choosing every third person. So third, sixth, ninth, and twelfth. And then convenient sampling, here's the lady up in the building and she's hollering at the guy walking by with her dog. Stratified sampling, 
we have two groupings, Democrats versus Republicans. You could substitute in males versus females, right? And from here we chose uh, three people, and from here we cho chose four people. And those are random sampling from the subcategories. Now the next one here is the cluster sampling. And cluster sampling says we have um, different clusters. So the architecture section one, art history section one, art history section two, biology section one, biology section two, biology section three, so on and so forth, all the way down through the zoology classes. So these are all the classes at a college. And then they're gonna go through and they're randomly going to choose the class and the section that they're going to get information from. But they're going to sam sam sample every single thing within this grouping. This picture actually isn't the, the one that I like to see for this cluster. It doesn't quite give you as good of a, a picture as some of the others that I've seen for this. Um, but and that is indeed the idea behind it. So that is our different types. And this is on page 29 of your book. That's referred to in my notes as well. So our next thing to do um, is to talk about this multi-stage. Our multi-stage um, sampling strategy is going to use a couple of these. So it may, um, it may randomly choose um, the order of the people and then systematically choose um, people from that ordering. Or it could stratify and then it could systematically sample from the stratifications. Or it could be a convenience sample that we then cluster into groups and then we randomly choose from those groups. So you see there's different ways we could put those together. and. Again, the idea is that we're eliminating sources of error, things that will cause us to see things not quite the way they actually are, which brings us down to the idea of sampling error and non-sampling error. There are two types of error that's all, that are present. Now, non-sampling error, that's what we've been talking about for about the last two sections. It's error that we can control. It's controlled by thinking and planning. And methods of sampling can help control this, this by making it as random po as possible and representative of the population. And there's a little bit of crossover here between what's non-sampling error and what's sampling error. But most about this is about thinking and planning in advance and making sure that we are not making any of those mistakes of deliberate um, deliberate errors or just errors out of ignorance that we have been talking about. Now the sampling error is error that we cannot control. This error is the difference between the sample and the population. We can make it as small as possible by using a very good sampling technique so that we get that sample to be as close to the population as possible. And that's where there's a little bit of crossover here. That's non-sampling error by using techniques to eliminate what actually is the sampling error. But sampling error really in its at its heart is not controllable. Sampling error is that difference that's going to exist between any sample and the true population due to the individuality of people. And that's going to wrap up this little mini lecture. The next um, lecture on section 1.5, I'm going to talk about an experiment versus an observational study and the t some of the types there.